hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Freya, I'm in the Ordnung Glasgow with my wife Fina and my two cats Kiska and Ronin. Welcome back or welcome if you're new and this is the first video you're seeing. I make knitting podcasts and a couple of other little knitting related videos too. This is a full-blown classic podcast. I weirdly only have one finished object though, um, which is a pair of socks, which is why I'm not wearing any knitwear today, but I am wearing a new made item, but it's sewing. Um, so there is sewing content in this video, which is a first, and I'm a little bit obsessed. I'll put that at the end, um, and I'll have everything timestamped. So if you just wanna watch the knitting, if you just want to watch the sewing then you can jump to wherever you want. Uh, I guess I'll start with the boring admin bit. Uh, so you can support me in a couple of different ways now when if you watch the adverts all the way through um, then I get a little bit of money and I have a Ko-Fi and oh I have a like gift is it, no, a wish list section in Ravelry so you can give me a pattern if you want and thank you to everyone who has already and has supported me and I have also recently, very recently, just set up a GoFundMe for a surgery that I am getting and I will now go into live chat and talk about that. Um, so if you're not interested in live chat, um, I don't blame you, just skip to the knitting or skip to the sewing or whatever you want to watch. Um, but if you are interested in a little bit of life chat then I shall dive right into that just now. So basically I have had to set up a GoFundMe because I need to get a surgery. Um, me and my wife Karina have been on the fertility treatment waiting list for a year now on the NHS. Um, and we had our first initial like scans and tests called the high cozy um, and basically they, it's, it was to look at my fallopian tubes to see if they were open um, and then to see what kind of treatment I would be open to getting um, but they found polyps uh, in my uterus <laughs> which was unexpected and basically they're like mostly benign growth they can turn cancerous mostly later on in life um i was talking to the doctor about the options and he was like the waiting time on the nhs to see like to see a gynecologist is around two years <laughs> and then we'd have to wait again to get to this point that we are on the list for the fertility treatment and he basically heavily advised us to go private. <laughs> so we have looked into all of our options and phoned about, um, gotten quotes and looked at different consultants and doctors, all of that. And basically we've made the decision to go private and get the surgery privately, but that comes at a price, <laughs> which, yeah, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I believe that free healthcare for everyone, but three years is a long time to wait. And if you add on the year that we've already waited, that would be four years. Um, yes, trying not to cry if I talk about it too much. But um, yeah, if anybody wants to help uh, me raise some funds towards that, uh, I will link my GoFundMe. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful for trying to compose myself. <laughs> um, yes, I'm very grateful for all the support that I've gotten so far and thank you to everyone who has shared it or made a donation. Everything, every any kind of support is amazing. Um, yeah, because <laughs> I can't go ahead with any treatment until they're removed because they just won't do it because my chances of getting pregnant is so low. So yeah, they won't give me any treatment until they're gone and I don't, yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, yes, trying to get up the energy and go on to knitting as, yeah, <laughs> to compose myself. Anyway, 
one thing that I forgot to talk about, I went on to talk about my knitting, but I'm going to backtrack a bit um, and talk about a very exciting thing that's happening. <laughs> um, and I have designed my first pattern, I have graded it, I have written it, um, and I am currently waiting on the yarn to knit up my final sample before I call for testers and I am in talks with um, a dyer, a yarn dyer, um, which is just incredible. I'm, I feel very lucky that um, they, they have been open to collaborate with me and so far um, all the conversations have been amazing and very positive and very exciting. I'm not going to say who because I feel like I've not talked to them about when I'm going to announce, you know, that I'm working with them and all of that. So I'm not going to say who, but it's very exciting and I'm just so excited. They sent me some samples of the yarn and just some colourways they had laying around and I did lose some samples, like um, swatches, and they're just amazing. I'm so excited. I absolutely adore the fabric and I'm so excited about thinking about the colourway that we're going to do and all of that. So yeah, that's <laughs> an upbeat thing <laughs> to end my life chat on um, and we shall move into the knitting. <laughs> so um, my only finished object is a pair of socks, like I said, and it is again the I'm Ecstatic Socks by Cool Stitches. This seems to be my go-to little project in between the big projects for some reason. Um, I think because they're quite a small project in terms of like, it's a larger needle for a pair of socks. And they're kind of mindless, but kind of not, because there's um, cables all the way down it. Um, so I knit the size three. Um, and let me see my notes. So the mohair is a Rico Essentials mohair that I had left over from knitting a Stockholm slip over. And the sock yarn is called Durable Socks. And that was actually very, very kindly gifted to me by a viewer and I've been wanting to knit with it ever since. I just, I love knitting with a sock yarn that I've not knit with before and also I couldn't find out too much about it. Um, I can't remember what country she lives in now which is awful but I, it seems to be like a that country only yarn, if that makes sense. Um, uh, so the mohair is darker so you can't really see but the sock yarn um, the sock yarn is like tweed um so i think it's made for a very interesting sock and i've actually not worn these yet because i finished them just as it was extremely hot here it's not so hot now but i feel like I feel like it's not weather anymore to wear wool socks, which is devastating because I wear them every single day. But when it comes to summer, I, I just can't. It's just too hot. <laughs> I have a couple of cotton uh, socks and I am wanting to knit a couple more, but I'm not the biggest fan of knitting cotton socks. I've knit, a, I've knit a few on the knitting machine and I think that's the way to go. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just to get a couple of pairs so I can still get the feeling of wearing hand knitted socks but I'm not dying of the heat. <laughs> so yeah, not much to say because I have knitted these twice, three times before. <laughs> I think three times, no, twice. My memory is awful, um, so yeah, my only finished object. Now I'm going to jump right into whips. I'm going to start with the whip that I'm most excited about and it is actually a test knit. It is my first test knit that I have done in a long time. I can't remember what my last test knit was. I have a feeling it was just made um, helix pullover and yeah, I kind of, after that, 
was like, I'm not going to apply for any test nets that I'm not extremely excited about just because um, deadline nets aren't my favourite. And I had quite a few deadline nets in terms of like Christmas gifts and stuff like that. So I didn't want to add another deadline net in that mix. But now that those are well and truly over, thank God, <laughs> um, I decided to apply for this test net and I got it. Yes, I have everything thrown about the floor. <laughs> um, it's a mess. But anyway, so this test net is the Camden Camisole by the Knit Pearl Girl. This is how far I've gotten. It looks very messy because you do a provisional cast on for the um, straps on all four triangles. So there's like three strands at the top of each triangle and then a couple of strands at the bottom of each triangle. But anyway, I have just joined all four in the round and I am a little bit obsessed with this pan already. So I, yesterday evening is when I cast on my first triangle and this is how much I got done in the evening. Um, I've not done any today, like this is just it. And so yeah, it's safe to say I'm a little bit obsessed with this. When I first saw her um, initial like first sample, I was, like I just wanted to knit it and I was so excited for when it came out and honestly I couldn't wait. I, so I, I applied for the test net and I got it. <laughs> I've applied for a couple of other test nets actually now that I'm remembering and I didn't get them but I got this one and I'm so excited that it's because my heart is fully in this one and um, before getting the news and making the decision to get a private surgery I had already bought um, a couple of summer yarns. All of them dropped saffron because I really like that yarn and it's so affordable. And I had the quantity I needed in um, a colour. So it was perfect. I didn't have to buy any yarn for it um, and I could use the yarn that I had in stash. So it's dropped saffron in the colourway I don't know. Um, it's just the light blue colour but I didn't get gauge, it was um, it was too holy, uh, it didn't look great. So I had a random lace weight, I don't know what this is, it's very strange, it kind of feels like a viscose thing but because it was on a cone, sometimes when you get like, like wool on a cone, especially if it's for the knitting machine which I think this is, it can feel very different to say a wool hand knitting yarn so honestly I'm not sure I'm not sure what this is but held together and um, even if it is a wool I'm completely okay with that and I think it'll be fine to wear in the summer anyway um so yeah not a lot to say about this apart from well I'm knitting the size three and so <laughs> I got to row seven and I hit a wall and I was like, what are these instructions? So I got so confused. So I wrote in the um, group chat, the WhatsApp group chat, I was like, can somebody help me please? And what it was is that you do some left lifted increases and um, I've done those before and I know how to do them. So I just went and did what I usually do, which is, um, you know, I just lift the bar, knit it, and then go on. Um, but um, Sophie, ha is that her name? Oh my gosh, I'm so bad with names, and now I feel like I've gone it wrong. <laughs> I think her name is Sophie. Um, she had explained a left lifted increase in the pattern as you knit one stitch and then you do the increase. So for the instructions for the left lifted increase, it it's worked over two stitches, if that makes sense. And I'm used to the instructions only being for the increased stitch. So um, 
I'm so curious to know if anyone else has come across a left lifted increase described as this way in a pattern because I've not um, and apparently um, I was talking to one of the test netters and she said that actually you know both ways are quite common but I've never come across it being described as the two stitches I'm not explaining this well but hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about if you have come across it um, so yeah that threw me off a little bit but apart from that I am having so much fun basically it's um, a rib pattern but you do the increase increases in the rib like pattern so it starts off as a smaller rib and then it increases into a bigger rib and I just think it's so cleverly done and um, the grading for this must have been a nightmare <laughs> so I'm not jealous of that at all and it's I think it's just such a elevated um, everyday basic tank top and I'm very excited to finish this for sure I think I one of the patterns that I will knit more than once. I knit a lot of patterns more than once, um, I do realise that, but I am really enjoying this and I'm so excited to finish it, like I said. So that's it for that one, I believe. Um, yes, so <laughs> we will move on to my next one. Let's jump into the raw tea because I finished, I'm not finished, I started this in my last podcast, I know that. But I uh, ripped that out and cast on again. So basically I knit it on a 3.5 needle and the gauge came out way too big. So I went down to a 3.5, but I also took out, I think six stitches altogether. Um, which turned out to be a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> I should have sticked with the stitch count but just went down a needle um, just because you actually do, so it's a drop shoulder so you cast on for the shoulder and what I didn't realise is that you actually do decreases under the arm to then get it to the bust measurement and I thought, I didn't know they were there and I thought the amount of stitches for the shoulder was going to be the same around the bust and um, so I wish I had kept the largest stitch count so that the sleeves dropped down further because at the moment they don't they do drop down but not enough so that it's far away from my armpit so there's a, a bit of bunching under my armpit now I kind of it wouldn't so <laughs> I'm trying, trying to think how to explain this well basically I think also part of the problem is that the armhole depth is quite shallow. I would have liked this to be longer but I think because this pattern has has you like it's written for quite a lot of positive ease and I didn't want quite as much positive ease as the pattern asks for I feel like that has then exacerbated this problem whereas if I had enough positive ease it would be far away from my arm far further away from my armpit and it wouldn't have the same issue but yes if I was to knit this again with the same amount of ease then I would definitely make the armhole um deeper and keep the <laughs> extra six stitches along um the cast on but apart from that I absolutely love how this is coming along so again this is drop saffron in the off-white colorway as you can see I've done a lot all I need to do is the bottom hem which looks a lot like this and the arm um, holes it's that same kind of look and these details I think are just so clever and so beautiful and again it's like an elevated um, basic which seems to be the vibe that I like and I that's kind of the general thing that I look for in the knitting pattern and um, so yeah it has all of these like details 
that show off like um like all the seams and stuff and all of the eye cord binds off bind binds off by bound up up <laughs> what am I trying to say? All of the eye cord bind offs weren't too fun but I love the way that they have turned out and I yeah I really really like this I'm so excited to finish it but I kind of got burnt out with it a little bit I think because I had finished off all the edges and I tried it on and because of the bunching I was a little bit like oh I've put in so much effort into this and that part's a little bit annoying but I think once I've finished it I'm gonna properly stretch <laughs> stretch this part on a wet pocket and cotton I know stretches a lot and over time it, it stretches anyway when you wear it I think it'll be fine um but I think I just got a little bit upset with it <laughs> but um I should say also that um a very kind of you gifted me this pattern so thank you very much I think I cast it on pretty much straight away I believe um so yeah what did I I can't remember anyway <laughs> I think that's all I've got to say about that. Um, I will hopefully get this finished before my next podcast. I, want, I really want to get it finished for summer. And I, there's not much to go. I literally just need to do the hem and that's it. Okay, so now moving on to my next whip, which is another blouse number one. Uh, and this is what it looks like. So I think I... I didn't cast this on. This is a new cast on from my last podcast, but in the last one, I did speak about my first blouse number one version, and that was in Drop Spell, and I adore that. So I just wanted to make another one, and so I had some yarn that I bought for the knitting machine, but it's quite a slobby yarn, and it just wasn't going through the machine nicely and it was hurting my body quite a lot because every row was a real struggle. I was fighting with the machine with this yarn. So anyway, I decided to pull that off the machine and make a blouse number one because Hilde, I think I'm holding this for three or four strands together because it's quite a thin yarn. Um, and that reaches the same gauge as Drop Spell. And also it's quite similar to Drop Spell. I think it's a viscose mix. Um, I don't think it says anything else about that. I think it literally just says viscose mix. Um, so it's a bit, bit of a, I guess. But um, yes, Knit Up. It, I think it looks pretty similar to Drop Spell. And I really love this fabric. When it's blocked, the drape is gorgeous. So a couple of things that I changed was I cast on less stitches. And I cast on, the amount of stitches I cast on was even less than that. Um, the, uh, the pattern asks for the very smallest size to cast on. I think I did two stitches less than the smallest size. <laughs> Um, and I also did a couple more increases and short rows to get me to the right amount of stitches for the size that I um, decided to knit. I am going between a couple of sizes. I think I'm, I can't remember what specifically, but I have shuggled around the stitch um, numbers a bit. I think the arms have a couple of stitches less compared to the bust, uh, the body stitch count, I can't remember exactly, but I did swap around um, the increase rates because in my last one the um, shoulder drop was quite low and it's not my favourite, um, I think it looks a little bit odd and I know that it's going to stretch out even more the wear. Somebody did tell me in the comments that if I put it in the washing machine actually that shrinks it back up and so I'm going to do that. I actually wash all of my wool knits in the washing machine now on a wool cycle. I've never had any problems and it's just so much easier but um, <laughs> I feel a bit more 
apprehensive about putting plant fibers in the knitting in the knitting machine in the washing machine just because I have done I think I've done it once or twice before and they've came out quite creased and sometimes those creases can like make the dye go a bit weird and it ended up looking a bit tie-dye-esque I don't know if that's because it was I should hand wash it first or soak it in water before I put it in the knitting machine to try and combat that um, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to soak it, put it, in, put it in the washing machine and hopefully it won't do that weird tie-dye thing. <laughs> Fingers crossed anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that but also I did um, mess around with the increase rates and I made it a lot shorter and I think this is perfect. The length of it is perfect. Honestly, <laughs> I have written down what I did, so if anybody is interested, I will tell you specifically what I did, but it also is specific to my row gauge and what stitch counts I want, so I don't know how applicable it would be, but I can tell you how I messed around with them if anyone is interested and wants to combat that same problem. Um, so yeah. Again, I put this down, I think I just got so burnt out with this pattern because I literally cast it on so soon after I finished my first one and I just got a bit bored to be honest and I think I just wanted to cast on that raw tee um, which kind of took my attention. <laughs> okay, this is my final whip that I will talk about and it is a really slipover by Patina and somebody gifted me this pattern as well so thank you very much um it was a while ago now and i wanted to cast it on ever since but i just never got around to it because i was in the full swing of wanting to knit the plant based yarns but i got a bit fed up with that <laughs> and i wanted a wool um a wool knit and but i also didn't want a full jumper just because you know, it's, it's getting hotter and my um, full jumper mojo isn't as high and also I'm waiting on the yarn for making, for knitting up my jumper pattern. So I want to be fully excited for that and whiz through that because I really want to get that knit up as fast as possible so I can call for testers as fast as possible. So this was just the perfect um, project. I have so many need, uh, like, what are they called? Cords. I have so many cords on this because I just keep jumping from one section to the next. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this and I'll talk about why. So I didn't want there to be as much positive ease as the pattern asked for, like dramatically less I wanted. So I decided to go for that extra extra small um and even then I did two stitches less per side <laughs> for the um for each side compared to that um that side oh my god <laughs> yes I did two stitches less for the front two stitches left for the back for what the pattern calls for and I also, for each side, did three centimetres less because I didn't want it to come down as low as the pattern calls for. Um, I think the arm ribbing has pulled that up quite a lot and I'm hoping that blocks out because now it's a little bit shorter than what I wanted. And also the neck hole is pretty small and I added in maybe four extra rows maybe even six extra rows and what the extra extra small calls for just because I knew it was going to be quite small um, this pattern asked for a funnel neck and I didn't want that I just wanted like a normal neck band but it's pretty close to my neck and I'm not the biggest fan and I wish it was a little bit further away but I'm hoping that blocks out I think I'm going to do a mid project block. I have finished the ribbing for the second armhole, I just need to bind off um, and then I'm going to block it I think. 
it'll be my first time mid like blocking mid project um which i'm surprised i've not done before um i think i'm just too impatient i just want to finish it and block it but for this one i will because if it's not what i want i'm not gonna just carry on um i'll just rip it out and make the tweaks that i want and one other thing that i want to talk about with this is that my first go at knitting the front and back sections i actually knitted knitted it quite dramatically shorter than the pattern and that turned out to be a bit of a mistake so i ripped i'd done both back and front for the front i ripped out all the increases and then knit straight for longer and then redid the increases but that took a long time and in the back i was like do you know what i'm actually gonna cut into it knit a bit and then graft it back together I'm trying to think yeah this is the back i'm wondering if you can even see where i did it maybe i feel like you can in person yeah it's definitely this side i i think it's it's around here it's around this part if you can see um i had to do it twice because the first time i did it um i followed a tutorial online but that if this was the top bit and this is the bottom bit it kind of misaligned it like this i didn't realize until i got to the other end and i had too many stitches on this needle and too little on this so I ripped all that out and I did my own thing and that connected it perfectly. Um, so yeah, that was a bit frustrating but the second time was a lot faster and now I know how to do it properly. Not properly, but how I know how to do it with it lining up. Um, which is always a good skill to have because I'm sure it's not the last time I want to do that. I have done it once before on my Badger and Bloom jumper but that was to take out fabric. So I, um, you know, took out a chunk, but for this, I knit a bit and then joined it back, which I've not done before. But weirdly, I find it quite enjoyable. I love learning new techniques, but also it was really satisfying. I love finishing up socks and it's basically a big toe <laughs> that you've got to graph together, which, I find fun anyway so yeah secretly hoping that that happens again on another jumper just so I can do it again which is weird but yeah so oh another thing that I wanted to say as well is that I added decreases along the underarm for the arm rib if that makes sense because then at the end you go in and you pick the stitches up here and you do a double knit band here because then you add um, buttons onto this section but if I was to keep knitting then the rib would sort of I'm trying to see if you can see the rib would sort of poke out this way so it would be straight and then it would poke out which I'm not a fan of and I'm surprised that she didn't add in decreases but I added them in anyway <laughs> just so it sit flatter and sit flat on my body otherwise that would annoy me a little bit so yes, that is the end of everything I wanted to say for that. Okay, so now I am quite nervous to add in a sewing section because I know not everyone is a big fan of, you know, sewing and knitting podcasts and that's fine if, you, if you're not, I won't be offended if you don't want to watch this, but if you are interested, I have got a good couple of pieces to talk about. So, um, yes, I got into knit not knitting, I got into sewing and it's kind of been a slow burn, like, itch to try and sew. So a bit of a background with me and sewing. I've always known how to sew, hand sew and on the machine. It's just something I did as a kid. I, I think the first pieces of clothing I made was maybe I was like 10 and I made I we were going on a school trip like an overnight staying 
at a hotel school trip when I was maybe about 10 and we went to Edinburgh and I wanted to make some pyjamas for it. So I think I made a top and some shorts for me to wear and they were not well made and <laughs> I'm very surprised that I didn't get laughed at but um, thankfully people were very nice to me uh, from what I recall and they were very um, they were like, oh my god, you made that. So <laughs> I've not seen them since. I, I have no idea where they went, but yes. And then maybe when I was about 16, 17, I drafted my own trouser pattern. I I don't know where <laughs> I don't know why I jumped straight into self-drafting, um, but I did. Um in between then I would, you know, do like thrift flips where I would change my clothes and make things into shorts or cut up t-shirts and do this do that whatever um after that I then did some quilting and a couple of little things like that I mean I think I made about three quilts big quilts um I believe something like that yeah three three big quilts um nothing fancy or anything but it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago where I was like I'm gonna throw myself into following a pattern and actually buying specific fabric for sewing which I've not done before <laughs> I'd always like used like scraps of fabric or like fabric that people have handed down to me or something like that um, and <laughs> I did all of this before I knew, before I even knew that I had to have a surgery, let alone decide to have it privately. And it turns out that sewing is very expensive. <laughs> it's a very expensive hobby. Um, the patterns are more expensive than the knitting patterns, which honestly, I have no idea why. I don't know why that isn't a standard across knitting patterns either. I don't know why there's such a big difference um because I feel like it takes the same amount of work um so I don't know why there's such a big difference anyway that rubs me the wrong way in terms of like like knitting isn't um it's like people I, oh my god I can't I can't find the words to say but basically it's as if people don't put the right amount of value on knitting patterns but people put the right amount of value on knitting patterns, I mean sewing patterns, if that makes sense. Anyway, there's a whole other debate that I'm not getting to. But fabric is very expensive. Not only is it expensive, but for me anyway, sewing patterns, like sewing garments, don't take half as long as knitting things. So let's say I spend £20 on a jumper quantity of yarn, and that takes me maybe like three weeks to knit. If I spend £20 on a length of fabric, I can make a pair of trousers in two days. So <laughs> yeah, if you think about it like that, it's a bit crazy. But I have managed to get the cheapest fabric I can possibly find um, at a decent quality. So. I'll talk about what fabrics I've used and how I've managed to sort of find cheaper fabrics and yeah let's just jump into my first piece. So I followed um, an account called Puff and Pencil on Instagram for a long time now and I've always loved their designs but again I've never sewed any of them but it was actually one of their designs that made me go I need that. It's kind of the same as when I started knitting is I saw it was actually the JW Anderson cardigan and it's like I want that and I will do anything to get that even if it means learning a new skill and persevering and making mistakes and all of that stuff just to get to that point. So I seen the collared blouse by Puff and Pencil in the most amazing fabric I do wish I could have knit, not knit it, oh my gosh, I'm so used to saying knitting. I do wish I could have sewed it in that fabric. 
And I think that fabric is pretty affordable, but it's from a different country. So I think it was the shipping that put me off. Um, so yes, I actually had this fabric already in stash. I completely forgot to say that I sewed a skirt last year. <laughs> I completely forgot, yes, I sewed a skirt last year. Um, and I bought fabric to make another one of those skirts, but I never got around to it. So I decided to make my first sample, not sample, piece. My first go at this design in this fabric. So this is what it looks like. It has buttons down one side and little loops down the other. It has a collar. I picked the trumpet sleeves. So it's a got it's got a bit of a slit. I've got a video of me wearing this um, and also wearing a pair of trousers that I made that I'll show in a bit. Um, so this is 100% viscose fabric, it's by, I've written this down, it's by Minerva. It's a viscose chalice and it's in the colour Mocha. I'll link it below. I made the size small um, and yeah, I pretty much, I mean I followed the instructions exactly. They've got YouTube videos which honestly saved me. It's my first time putting in sleeves which was very scary and this one's a little bit bumpy, this one's maybe less bumpy but um, I got better at it with this one. Um, I don't know if you can see how smooth the shoulders have on this. I'm very proud of myself. Um, but anyway, it's not too noticeable. I don't think anybody would be like, that's poorly made. Um, and yeah, I'm just so proud of myself when I made it. I was like, I, I'm just, I was just actually in awe of myself because I was like, this looks like something I would buy in a shop. Um, so yeah, so, so proud of myself. I feel... Yeah, very proud, very proud of this because <laughs> I learned a lot of new skills and I managed to pull it off and I've made a wearable garment which is just crazy to me and um, it blows my mind a little bit. So yeah, that was my first sample and I knit that, <laughs> I sewed that in a size small. Um, my second piece, my second version is actually the one that I'm wearing. I'll stand up, but I'll also try and put in a picture or a video. Um, it's got a little side, side slit. Ignore my joggers. <laughs> and just a normal sleeve that I actually self-drafted. Um, and yeah, so I made a... Um, modification which is actually um, the ties so the actual pattern has loops and buttons like my first one um, but I decided to do ties on this one and that's because I actually got a shirt from H&M maybe like two or so years ago now and it's like my favourite top <laughs> but they don't make it anymore and I've only got one and it has already got holes in it because the fabric's a little bit fragile um, and it pretty much looks exactly like this like exactly like this I'll put in a picture side by side maybe <laughs> and yeah I'm very happy that I've managed to duplicate it and also I have the, the sewing pattern now and I can make it as many times as I want in as many different colours, different fabrics, whatever and I'm very much a find one nice piece, like find a piece of clothing in a shop that I like and buy it in a couple of colours and just wear that as like my uniform Um, so I'm glad that I didn't do that with that top from H&M but now I I can make as many as I want and it looks pretty much exactly the same which is like the magic of sewing and the magic of knitting is that when you've got the pattern you decide what yarn what color what this what that modifications and you can make a tailored piece of clothing to you which i just think is so magical it still you know 
makes me excited just thinking about it. So yeah, this is also a viscose fabric. It's from Fabric Godmother. Now that um, like company actually saves like fabric that would be going to like the landfill or whatever. Um, there's dead stock fabric and stuff like that. So this is out like out of stock that like, you can't buy it anymore. It's just like, yeah, a one-off. They'll never get it again. Um, and they were having a sale, like a spring sale. I can't remember why, why they were having a sale, but they had a massive like 50% off sale. Um, so I got this fabric and another fabric. Um, and yeah, feels good to be using a fabric that would be going to landfill, but also it was affordable. And I would highly recommend looking at that website because it's just always changing. Um, and you'll never know what gems you might find as well. So yeah, another viscose. I really love viscose. Um, I just love the drape. I like the feel. It feels very um, luxurious, but at an affordable price. And also it's a very summer friendly <laughs> fabric. It's quite breathable. So yeah, so that's the two tops that I made. And I have also made two trousers. One is for Karina and I just need to hem those. I need her to try them on with um, her shoes because <laughs> I don't, I, I want it to be the perfect length. I always take, she's very short, <laughs> very short. So I always have to take up like this much. I'm not even joking, like this much from all of her trousers. So yes, I, I need to get that perfect. But I made myself a pair and I will grab them. So these are the Peter pants by Sewing Machina. Um, I found this pattern on Etsy. They're just a very simple wide leg pant with some pockets. I'm very proud of myself, first pockets. <laughs> and um, yes, I've got a video so I'll pop that up because it's quite hard to show <laughs> on here. Um, so I'll talk about the fabric, why not? So I got that fabric from Pound Fabrics, I think it's called. Um, and it's called Linen Feel 100% Cotton and it's in the brown colourway and this was pretty affordable um, I think for, let me think, I think for that first um, collared blouse it was maybe around £15 for how much, the amount of fabric I bought for this one I think it was either 15 or 20 pounds. And for that amount of fabric, it was 20 pounds. And for Karina's fabric, it was 20 pounds. Um, so it, I've seen, I mean, those are like the cheapest fabrics I can find at a decent quality. Cause I also wanted a natural fiber. I didn't want anything plastic which is fine and in the future I probably would consider like um, a plastic blend with a natural fibre purely for price reasons or if I find a particularly nice bit of fabric um, but yeah for now I, I wanted to use natural fibres and I can't remember where I was going with that <laughs> I really can't <laughs> I'm not sure what size I knit in, uh, I'm not sure what size I sewed in those. It was maybe the third or fourth size. But um, yeah, the only thing I changed was the waistband actually. So in the pattern, it just tells you to fold it like this and sew the main, whatever you would call that, legs to the waistband. That means you have, would have an exposed seam um, in the inside here, but I didn't want that. So I actually like sandwiched the waistband to the legs. So there's no exposed, 
exposed seam on the inside or the outside and I think that elevated a little bit. I did the drawstring a little longer and um, I did um what what do you call these button holes in a piece for the first time which was quite scary but very fun and yeah this is actually I would highly 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 recommend that fabric it's so easy to work with it doesn't move about it's nice to cut it doesn't fray so much and um, I don't have an overlocker I just do like the overlock stitch <laughs> on um, a regular sewing machine which is just like a zigzag right at the end and that looks like it's holding up fine um, very satisfying fabric to work with. I am actually currently <laughs> making a waistcoat out of the same fabric so I will have a two-piece set which I am very excited about, very 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 excited about although the waistband is like a big increase in <laughs> um, difficulty just because um, the same for like a set and sleeve you have more fabric in the sleeve than you do like in the sleeve opening on the body so you've kind of got to manipulate it so that it lines up and that could be hard and that's when you get puckers at the top and stuff like that and that is what you do on like the seams down here on the waistcoat so and you have an outside and an, a lining so you've got to do that eight times but I did a mock-up and I learned a lot of things about what not to do and what to do and now I am going on to my final fabric and weirdly enough my final fabric is a lot easier to use <laughs> than the fabric I used for um, the mock-up. The, the fabric I used as a mock-up was like a random um, like duvet cover that I bought for the for making mock-ups <laughs> of sewing patterns ages ago um, so yeah one cotton fabric was harder than another I, I don't know enough about different fabrics and stuff yet I know a little bit I didn't actually learn any of that in my textile course um, I didn't really learn how to sew in my textile course um, yeah I knew more going into it than what I was taught, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, on the, I can't show you the waistband, the waistcoat, because it's complete. that's why I'm looking over here, is because it's completely over my entire floor. I've laid out every single piece, because there's a lining and there's an outside and it's just all over the place. I'm actually waiting on the little buckle that goes on the back, so I can't actually do any more and I'm very sad. <laughs> but yes, that... I don't think I'll I'll use up the fabric that I have just because I'm on such a kick. Um, but after that, I am on a complete no buy for everything for the foreseeable future for surgery reasons, <laughs> uh, which is fine because I've got a lot in stash and actually I added all of my yarn into my Ravelry stash, which has actually been amazing. I wanted to do it for the longest time. I've just not, because it's such a big job, but because I went through all of my yarn and vacuum sealed it, so I could fit it all in the one <laughs> like section in my big tower of supplies. <laughs> um, I just took pictures as I went and I documented all of it and it's actually amazing. I love it. I can just jump in, see what I've got, and go, I've got this for this pattern, I can make it with this, blah blah blah. So yes, I've got enough yarn, and I have my um, jumper sample to knit up as well, and lots of exciting things happening in the future. I'm excited to knit, I'm excited to sew, I'm excited to get my pollocks out. <laughs> And I'm excited to begin for fit for fit but <laughs> I'm excited to begin fertility treatment um whenever the NHS decides that um we are at the top of the waiting list. And yeah. 
So thank you so much for watching. It's been a bit of a roller coaster this one. <laughs> um, I've spoken about a lot of things that I didn't think I'd ever speak about um, on my knitting podcast, but here we are. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much and um, I would love it if you could check out my GoFundMe and share it about if you can. And yeah, I will see you in the next ones. Bye. <laughs>